Hey, welcome to the first lesson of our tutorial series on how to create the game Among Us in Unity. For this lesson, we're going to be going over setting up the Unity project and creating the player prefab. Now, before we begin, you might want to consider signing up to become a member on our website at www.infogamerhub.com. At this point in time, it only costs $3 a month to sign up, and it'll give you access to all of the copy and paste code for this tutorial series as well as many of our other lessons. Now let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we need to do to get started with our Among Us game is to create a new Unity project. And so with Unity Hub opened, you'll want to click on the New button. We'll then select 2D, give our project a name, and select the correct location for our project, after which you can click Create. Now once Unity is finished setting up your project, you should have an empty scene where the main camera has its clear flag set to solid color and its projection set to orthographic. This is what makes our project two-dimensional. Now the first thing that we'll do for our Among Us project is create the player prefab. To do this we'll create an empty game object. So you can right click in the hierarchy and go down to create empty. I've then renamed this object to AU for Among Us underscore player. We'll then change the tag of this object to be player which is a default tag that should already exist within your Unity project. Next there's two components that we'll add to this object. The first is a three-dimensional rigid body. You can add this component by selecting add component and then just search for rigid body and you'll want to add a plain rigid body and not a rigid body 2d now even though our game is 2d there's nothing wrong with using three-dimensional components it just means that objects have to be on the same Z plane in order to interact now once you've added the rigid body you'll want to disable use gravity then go down to constraints and freeze the position on the z-axis and all its rotations. This will help keep our player upright. The next component that we want to add is a capsule collider. So you can click add component and then just search cap and make sure that you select Capsule Collider and not Capsule Collider 2D. Now we will need to resize this Capsule Collider, but in order to do that, we need to have some visual elements. And so we'll create the sprites for our player object. To do this, we'll right click on our empty game object and go down to 2D object and then select Sprite. I've then renamed this object to Sprite and all we have to do is apply the Sprite image to the Sprite render component. And so here in my project, I have two Sprite sheets, which you can download from our website website if you follow the link in the description below. The first sprite sheet includes all of the parts of the player that change color, whereas the second sprite sheet includes all of the pieces that don't change color. You'll want to download both of these images and save them into a sprites folder. Now with each of these sprite sheets, we first need to slice them. And so with the file selected, we'll change the sprite mode to multiple and click apply. Then select the sprite editor, which will open this new window from where you can select the slice drop down menu you want to change the type to grid by cell size then change the pixel size to 128 by 128 and click slice. This will divide up our sprite sheet into all the individual images. Now there will be a couple blank images on the second row and if you want to you can just delete these after which we'll click apply and close the window. We then need to do the same thing to our other sprite sheet. Once you have both sprite sheets divided up, we'll go back to our sprite game object. We can then expand our first sprite sheet and select the first element and drag it into the sprite field of our sprite render component. We then need to add another sprite object for the part that doesn't change color. So we'll right click on the first sprite object go down to 2D object and select Sprite. I've then renamed this object to Part, and all we have to do for this object is offset the Z position to be something like negative 0.05. This will put this Sprite object in front of our other Sprite object. Then we need to expand our other Sprite sheet and select the first element and drag it into the Sprite field of this object. Now if we go back to the first Sprite object and we select the color field, we can then change the player to any color, and you'll notice that the visor stays the same. For now we'll just leave it white and we'll go back to the player parent object. Now that we have something visual that we can reference for scale, we can resize our capsule collider. So you'll click the edit capsule button. In the scene view, you can then grab the green anchor points and resize the capsule so that it is as tall and as thin as our sprite objects. Now the last thing that we need to do for this lesson is make this object into a prefab. So first you'll want to create a prefabs folder, then select the parent player object from the hierarchy and drag it into your project. 
project window. And that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson. For our next lesson, we'll be going over the basic player movement. Now, if you enjoyed this lesson, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.